Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a little handheld Vax vacuum cleaner. It's a model, if you've got supervision, TBTT1B1, 150 watt, 21.6 volt, uh, lithium ion vacuum cleaner. Battery goes in here, in a case like, well, this case. Uh, slots in this way and uh, goes in there. And I was having an issue with it. Obviously, first of all, I didn't pay for it, I found it. So the issue I had was when you turn it on, it would run the light on top here would be green for a moment and then flash red. So I thought, well, I'd better charge it up. And on the handle is the charging port, uh, which has come out here at the moment. And I hadn't got the correct charger for it, but I stuck 20 odd volts on it. 22, I guess I probably stuck on it. And I think it just did that maybe 24 volts through just a standard transformer. And it would flash red up here and a bit of investigation said that flashing red's not good, it's just not charging, it thinks the battery's a dud. So there's the shell for the battery. It's got two torque screws, but they're not regular torques, they're those little dealies with the button inside. And I don't mind them because I got this set of tools ages ago that has pretty much all of the security fastenings that I've ever needed. A couple of other ones I've had to make, but it's got the right kind for this anyways. So I was able to get in there and that's the battery model number. Let's get right in there. BTTV 1B1 6 INR 19 slash 65. A battery made in China. Oh, and it says use it with a certain type of charger. So maybe that maybe that's the issue. Maybe it no, but it has the charging cable port thing on the on the handle, so I don't know. I don't know if the thing is meant to be a charger or not. Anyways, I ripped that apart. Got in there to this. That's the battery. Six eighteen six fifty lithium ion cells and a battery charging module or a battery management system. Some corrosion on it. Um if I lift it up here, I might lose my charging connection, but down at the battery positive terminal down here. There's a bit of corrosion there on the circuit board, so I could I could give that a wash, but I'm not sure if I will. People have commented on Andy Reynolds' videos, and he's been doing a bit of stuff on these recently, saying that you can get fatigue cracking in the solder. That could be an issue. I don't know. So I opened it up anyways, put a multimeter on it across from here to here, checked the voltage. It was at 19.9, which is under 20 which maybe is a fail-safe voltage. Then, bypassed the whole thing, stuck it on the bench power supply on the right-hand side here, and if we check the volts, it's probably a bit high now. No, I've put a 22 and a half there on the scale. 22 and a half volts, and on current, I've put, I had it a bit higher, and it's, this, this supply is it's good, but it's fit. It's bloody ancient. Look, look at that current jumping all over there, and that's the fine meter. Um, but I don't, I'm not, not hundred percent sure about how to work this one, and I haven't read the manual recently. It's a twin power supply unit. Uh, so let's turn that off. Let's take it off the charge. For now, let's get a multimeter. Set it at two hundred volts because twenty won't read it correctly because it's over 20 volts. Let's put the positive on the positive, negative on the negative. We're getting 22.7, which is higher than it was. So it started at 19.9, then I charged it all day yesterday, slowly at about 0.1 of an amp, and it went up to 21.9. So now it's at 22.7. 1860s, six times 3.7 volts, if you're able to do sums faster than me. Anyways, it's up there with where it should be, so I'm going to reassemble it, and you've had to bear that preamble, and we'll see if it works, and we'll see if it charges, and we'll see if it's back to normal. And if it is, it's a success. So that was all held in place with hot glue, and I just wedged it out with a screwdriver, and I know you have to be really careful with lithium cells course and that snaps in there I think That's, you have to bludgeon that end open but 
good thing about repairing things that you didn't, I don't even know if I need to bother putting screws in that for now, I won't bother, just in case. And I need to reassemble the handle on this because I've obviously been faffing around there. I'll put this back together off camera because it's not too complicated. But before I put it back together, on the charger you've got three wires, black, white and red. I think I did the continuity test, red is positive and it goes to the center pin. Then there's a side pin there, or side flap or spring, and I think that was black. And then you've got this white one, no the other way around, white goes to the side and black, I don't know where it goes. But it just is screwed on like an earth, but to a plastic ground, I, I don't get that. And that's something now that confused me, <laughs> it's the simplest way to put it. So I don't know what that's doing there, but if you know about what's going on with the wiring here, tell me in the comments, because that doesn't make any sense to me. And so the switch in this case is just a micro switch on and off. And I'm going to put the button back in there. And the charger is held in with a single screw that you can't just see, but it's up. you can just see it above my thumb there. Now getting these wires in is going to be a treat. It's there. They're all a little bit tight where they are. There isn't enough flexibility now to get things sorted out, and that doesn't probably want to go that way. So I'm guessing I've got to get these ones over here in this groove and I've got to get this white one in here, otherwise they'll interfere with the on-off switch. I've lost the spring, that's a, not a nice thing, because it's hard to get on. And there's a piece of plastic that I just heard falling down. That is in here. This piece of plastic covers the wires up. It's held in place by the handle being returned in position. The spring has to line up with the handle the switch. There. And then this has to slide in here. And that has to be in position. So this, this back bit has to slide in and this bit here has to be in position and it's locked in place then. Looks like we're back on track. Got four screws on the table. I don't know where they came from, but I'll put them in. So it had a screw on the bottom, a screw here, and two inside there. I better put the filter back in, and it just snaps in like that. And then the battery slides in like that. And that's a button to turn the brush on the, if you've got a brush head on the extension there. Let's see, noise. So it's definitely taken a charge there and it stayed green. The next test is to put a power lead on it. So I've rigged up a power cable. It's just the tail end off another one. I'll plug that in. I'm hoping I've done it correctly. And of course on this thing I haven't got a live and neutral cable correctly. I've only got two neutral alligator, not neutral, but uh, negative alligator clips. So let's put the clips on. The clip's on there, turn that, that's on. That should be set up to go, actually. Uh, put the voltage, putting up to 23, let's bring it up a bit more, 24 volts. I would expect to see on this, that's flashing red again. Don't know it's 24 too high. I'll try turning it down a bit, hey? No, it's not it's not right. So I wonder is there a fault on the BMS? Let's just yoke it all the way up there to 20. Won't take oh. red. Okay. So it looks like it needs maybe that's what maybe that's all that was wrong. I've given it 26 and it's gone constant red, which may be charging or maybe slowly destroying it. 26 and a half there, maybe. Let's just check the current on that. Um see any current reading on that. Certainly got the voltage right. 
This is why I don't like this machine, because I'm not convinced it's <laughs> fully working. Oh, now it's flashing red again, so I think I've adjusted the voltage stays the same, but I think it needs more current. Whoa, there we go. It's dropped back again. So the needle, I think, is knackered on this, but it was up at about one amp there. But the knob on the right here should be the current knob. But while that's red, that light there under my hand is red. I'm just going to leave it be and see what happens for, for a while. See if it goes green after a while. I'll just leave it. Come back to it. So this has been on for about eight hours. Charging at about 20, well, 26 volts now. The red light has been on the whole time. And that's that. It's not gone off. It's supposed to go green when it's charged. Reading the manual, when you get it for the first time, you're meant to charge it for eight hours uh, to protect the batteries or to fully charge them or something. And then from then on, it's a five hour charge. So this is probably not its first charge and it's way over eight hours. So let's turn that off. The charging light's gone off. Pull out that makeshift charging cable. Uh, turn this off, even though I don't, I'm not entirely sure that this machine um, is working properly that switch especially because look at this that main switch is maybe not working right so what I can do is give it a go on some carpet and let's see what we think So what was that, about a minute, minute and a half of vacuuming? You can see in there we've gathered up a load of stuff. It's not great. It's very, like it's, it's you know, single hand, but it feels floppy. When it's on the ground, it feels okay. It doesn't feel like it's working very hard. It certainly doesn't feel like an electric, you know, plug-in vacuum cleaner. I guess it, it, it isn't one, and that's that. And you're not going to beat that, really. So there, what more can we say? What model is this again? Oh, it weighs a ton when you hold it like that. Jeez, look at how small that writing is. TBTTV1B1. It's a Vax cordless slim vac with battery problems. I'll keep pottering right away with that. It's kind of handy to have out here. And when you've got a bench power supply, you can kind of do what you want with it. What do you think?
Can we keep these lithium-ion batteries going? Should I just buy a new battery? I don't really know if I want this thing, you know. I'm quite happy with Henry in the workshop. I think if you take off the bar here and just plug the end into this, it would be good on stairs. Well, no, I don't. I don't think it would be good on stairs. I think it would be mediocre on stairs compared to the Electrolux Mondo that I have inside. And that's kind of where I am. You can stick with a wire and have suction or you can have this thing where you're holding all of the weight in your hand. You know, other machines put the battery behind. You know, the ergonomic design nowadays of battery drills is to be balanced. The battery is down below and the motor's up here. And so you're in kind of balancing mode when you're using a screwdriver or whatever. That's what I mean. So it's like a dumbbell rather than this design. I think Dyson have started to go for that. I have a Dyson vacuum cleaner, a handheld one, but with no battery, so I can't even pretend that it works. I don't know. What do you think? Thanks for watching. See you later.